When modeling in 3D, one of the most important things that you'll find is the need to have good reference. And one way that you can create really good, really easy reference is by creating billboards like this here. And this is a very quick and easy way of working. So when I've got this all set up, I can just create a box right in the middle of them. I can press Alt W, sorry, Alt X rather, to make it slightly see through. And you can see here what I'm doing. When I come back and I look in all four views, we can see that as I move that box around, it moves about in the 3D view and it kind of lines up in between all of them. So I can very quickly and very easily sort of start to make shapes and start to pull that about so that it becomes the model and the shape of our spaceship here. But how did I get here in the first place? Well, what I'll do is I'll first of all just do a very quick reset. So again, I'm going to start from a blank sheet here and a new file. And I'm going to start by creating just a flat plane to begin with. Now, one thing I have done in Photoshop is I've checked the size of the images. And I happen to know that the images that we're going to be using are 800 pixels wide by about 480 high. So I'm typing in the same number of system units here that correspond to the pixel size of the image. And that way I get exactly the same height and width ratio that I would expect to be seeing in my images. Now that I've got this first image plane done, I'm going to go to my rotate tool. I'm going to turn on angle snap. I'm going to press shift, hold it, and then I'm just going to rotate through 90 degrees. I'll make that a copy and I will move it with my 3D snap set. There we go. Next thing I'll do is I'll go to my rotate tool again. I'll left click and I'll rotate through again by another 90 degrees. This time turning on F4 so I can see my grid points so that now when I move this around I can actually move the midpoint of that of this um, surface to the midpoint of this one here. Now what I might also want to do is consider actually taking this plane and moving him just there. There we go. So there's literally, it's, it is really that simple to set the planes up to begin with. It wasn't difficult at all. As you saw, all I did was I, take, I took a plane, I made it the same sort of size as my images. Remember that your images will need to be the same um, size and they'll all be, need to be centered around the middle point of the image. But what I'll then do is I'll then come to my materials here and I'll just click on diffuse. And I'll say bitmap and you can see here I'm defaulting straight to my images folder in my or in my, yeah, my images folder in my in my project folder and I'll click first of all on the front ortho and I'll open that up and then I'll change there we go make that a cube make this a cube to begin with as well and under my diffuse I'll click on the diffuse cube there was diffuse setting pick bitmap go to the left and my last one do the same thing again except for this time I'm going to pick the top so now what I can start to do is I can start applying these these uh, materials onto these objects just by dragging and dropping them now you may notice that it doesn't appear straight away that's because I need to show it in the viewport so I'll do the same with this material show in the viewport same with this material show in the viewport and there we have it we're very nearly there now one thing you would find is if we left things as they stand at the moment every time you go to create or select rather um, one of your cubes or one of your objects there's a likelihood you're going to keep selecting these back plates and then you're going to move them and something's going to go wrong and it's all going to be painful and all going to be horrible so what we're going to do is we're going to select all of those three planes and I'm going to right click on them if the right click menu will come up there we go and I'm going to go to object properties under the object properties I'm going to uncheck show frozen in gray okay and then I'm going to click OK now let me show you the reason why I've done that if I just create another plane here 
and I just dump one of the materials onto it. There we go. If I come along here to my display tab and I say freeze selected, I now can't select that object, but also at the same time, I can't see the image that we had applied to it. So it's no good for me to freeze that object so that I don't select it. And there's no real other way of getting around this problem. Unless, of course, I had selected them, gone into object properties, unchecked show frozen in gray. And then when I press freeze selected, you see we can still see the materials underneath, which is brilliant. I can't select anything because it's frozen. So that's really, really very, very useful in actual fact. It's very, very useful indeed. So now all I need to do is to go to my create, create a box. I'll start by creating something in the center of the scene there. Press Alt W to go to my four views. And I'll just come around here and I'll switch each one to be its corresponding perspective view or corresponding orthographic view. And you can see as I move this object up, take off my 3D snap, so I move it up and I move it into the middle of the plane. You see just over maybe that door. It's in the right place here for the door. Just shut that out of the way. There we go. It's in the right place for the door here. Again, shut that out of the way. And it's in the right place for the door here. So as you can see, by using this method, it's very, very quick, very, very simple. And you get a nice, accurate way of doing things.